Hello everyone, it's Double A here. Today we're digging into the archives and looking at some old software that claims to be able to make MP3 file sizes smaller without any reduction in quality. How does this software do it? Well, the software is called MP3 Packer and a GUI version was made called Win MP3 Packer. And this Win MP3 Packer, the last released, was back in 2007, but it still actually runs in Windows 10. So how MP3 Packer works is it's able to make MP3 files smaller because a lot of MP3 files are encoded with constant bitrate. This is done for mostly older players that can't support a file having a variable bitrate. So these constant bitrate files contain a lot of padding, a lot of extra useless data that is added just to please players that want a constant amount of data every second to process. So what MP3 Packer does is it removes this padded data. It also tries to apply a more efficient compression algorithm. It would be analogous to unzipping a zip folder and then re-zipping it with higher compression settings. You don't lose any of the actual data that's in there, but you make the file size a bit smaller. So the first thing you want to do is download the WinMP3 Packer program, which you can either get from this Hydrogen Audio website right here, but this will download it as a 7-zip compressed folder, which you will then need 7-zip to unzip it. Alternatively, you can click the Google Drive link in the description to download this program as a zip folder. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let's download that. And let's just save it to the downloads folder. Let's open up the downloads folder. And now for this to work, you're going to want to extract the Win MP3 Packer folder. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and run winmp3packer.exe. Now the first time you go to do this, if you don't already have the .NET Framework 3.5 installed, you're going to be prompted to do that, which is required to run this program. So let's go ahead and download and install that software. All right. Now let's try to run WinMP3 Packer again now that the .NET Framework 3.5 has been installed. All right, now that we've got WinMP3 Packer running, let's pick an input folder. So I have a folder here with all of my MP3s that have not been run through the software yet. We're gonna select that and it will add that to this input list. You can add multiple folders here, or you can use this button here to add individual files. But we're just going to process everything in that folder. Now, as far as input types, you can tell it whether you want to process only constant bitrate files or both constant and variable bitrate files. Now, you're going to see the most compression with constant bitrate files as it can convert them to variable bitrate and save space by removing that padding I was talking about. But because of its optimized compression algorithm, you can even see a little bit of size reduction on variable bitrate files. So I'm going to set that to all. Now as far as output type to get our smallest file output possible, we're going to use variable bitrate. You could also use constant bitrate if you needed to convert a variable bitrate MP3 to a constant bitrate, say for an older device that couldn't support the variable bitrate. That said, the CBR will make your file size bigger, not smaller. We're aiming for smaller. Minimum bitrate, we can leave that set to auto. Strip non-MP3 data. I'm going to uncheck this because this will remove any like song name or album art or any other file properties or metadata, which you might want to remove. But in this case, I don't really want to remove that. Then here we can also append text to file names. So by default, it's appending dash VBR to indicate that these files have been processed and converted to a variable bitrate. 
we have alternate broken frame behavior. And from what I understand this does is it just throws out corrupt frames if it runs into any. So I'm gonna enable that. And then there's also super squeeze files, which you definitely want this enabled if you want the smallest file size possible. Now it warns you that it's slow, but remember this software was made back in 2007, so any modern computer should be able to process MP3s with this enabled, no problem. And then you have the option to overwrite existing files. Uh, I don't really want to do that. And you can select an output folder. You can leave it either at the same as input or make a custom output folder. So I'm going to output these files somewhere else. And that's why I made this reduce size MP3s folder. So that's where I want to put the output. And you have the option to recreate subfolders in this new location if you want to. There's also the option to copy unprocessed MP3s. So for example, if you have an MP3 that uh, for whatever settings you have set, it does not run it through its compression algorithm, you can still copy them to the new folder if you want still all your songs there. So let's go ahead and hit process and see how much space we can actually save. It's really hitting the CPU pretty good. It's using all four of my cores, or well, technically all four of my threads. I haven't tested this on a machine with more cores or more threads, but uh, it's nice to see that it's using four threads and not just one, as I might expect from such an old software. All right, so it's done, and it's saying that 1,002 items were successfully processed, and it's showing that the overall decrease in size of all of the MP3 files was 6.1%. So this isn't substantial, but it's definitely something. About 8.5 gigs went in, and a little under 8 gigs went out. So trimmed off about a half a gig there. Good! All right, so let's see how it did. On the left, I have the full-size MP3s before they were ran through the software. And on the right, I have the reduced-size MP3s. And I can see some general trends depending on where I got the file from, what source. So for example, these 338 special songs at the top, I used a Ripper software to get them from a, we'll just say a very popular video sharing website. And clearly, it did not add a lot of padding to those because the MP3 Packer software was only able to reduce them to, well, the ones 314, ones 311, 310. So not a whole lot of reduction there. Where I did notice a lot of reduction, though, was in CD rips. So, for example, I have ripped the Billy Idol album Cyberpunk off of a CD, and I forget if I use Windows Media Player or Exact Audio Copy, but I had set the rip bitrate to be 320 kilobits per second, and whatever encoder I use must have added a lot of padding because seeing I'm seeing for songs off of that album, bitrate was reduced to in the range of 250 to 260-ish kilobits per second. So a lot of space savings there. And I noticed that general trend for pretty much anything I ripped from a CD. But we still haven't answered the question. Is there really no loss in quality? Using the method I described in a previous video, I'm going to compare these two files in the popular free open source editor Audacity. So let's drag in the unprocessed file, which is about 15 megs, and the processed file, which is about 12 megs. And this is one of those CD rips that I saw the best compression on. Now, if I invert one of the tracks, I select it, I go to Effect and Invert. That will invert the waveform. Now if I select both of these tracks, go to Tracks, and Mix, and Mix and Render, it will combine these two tracks together. And what do we see? We see silence. 
So when I add the inverted waveform of the processed file to the unprocessed file, we get nothing out. That means there is no difference between the two. They contain the exact same audio information. And if you don't believe me, I can go to Effect and Amplify to see if I can amplify any small distortions that might be in here. And there's nothing to amplify. It can't amplify anything. There is absolutely no difference between those two tracks. These are all zeros, which is pretty amazing. So it works. And I've tested this with other files too. But this is a really neat way to make your MP3s smaller. Might not be so useful today now that MP3 is kind of a dying format, but kind of neat nonetheless. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And for more videos, all things technology, be it software, radio, electronics, please consider subscribing.